Okay, just tuning in, by the way. Alice, you guys have been very, very busy. You recently represented South Africa in Amsterdam. Once in the studio, Ben and Juliet from Good Luck! It's exceptionally demanding industry this when you, in the modern day music world, when you have to handle everything. You have to handle the shows, the marketing, the making of the product. Writing is a very personal and difficult thing if you have been using the opposite side of your brain for too long. Well, Going we're in. spending more time in this office than we are in the studio. Currently, so, yeah. And it's now come to the stage where we <laughs> we can't carry on anymore. We've got a, we've got a produce and record and release a, a difficult second album. It's not just me who's suffering from this process of being kind of stuck in a dark studio and, you know, hitting a, my head against the brick wall. The whole band are in the same situation. I came to the band and I said, uh, <laughs> this might sound crazy, but uh, I want to go outside. I want to take us all into well, the place that we all want to be, which is out there. I've been spending a lot of time trying to figure out how to do that. One factor is weather and wind, and uh, the other factor is people. You know, after a lot of research, I think we found the perfect place, which is actually right on our doorstep. It's the neighboring country to South Africa. Um, so we're going to Namibia. And we're gonna go make this yeah. album in the desert. It's, I think, five o'clock in the morning, and we've managed to get whole recording studio and a camera studio into five little minis. We've put together a really amazing solar panel power setup that is going to power everything. Suddenly we're here. I'm really excited to see if, if being in this space and being in this place is going to change the, the creative block that I've been suffering from for the past few weeks. I want to record not only the band, you know, working their instruments and Jules's vocals, obviously, but I also want to capture some other crazy ingredients from Namibia. You know, it's such a vast country, it's got such diversity, and there's just all these little opportunities that I've, in my research, I've sort of discovered along the way. Well, we figured out that these rocks generate tones and we are just running around hitting a whole bunch of rocks trying to figure out probably like some sort of chromatic scale. So here, yeah, yeah, this is the best part. The microphone will be better. You can hear the tone. Okay, now sing it. It's about... Mm, mm, yeah. Mm, Tosh is really the only place where I'm going to get a chance to record animals with my parabolic microphone. Tonight is the first time I'm going to get to see if it even works. Evan and I have been talking about how we want to utilize these sounds and one of the ideas is to sample those low grunting noises, put them into a keyboard synthesizer, have them playable across the keyboard. Basically, that means that I can take the grunt of a rhino and use it as a bass line in one of our songs. So we're just hoping that maybe we're going to get something tonight, but if not, we at least made sure that all the equipment's working. <laughs> The writer's block thing, I'm still in there. I'm, I'm still in that place. It hasn't broken yet, but we're very early into the trip. 
but breaking into this environment, already I'm feeling a lot more uh, rejuvenated and I think seeing all this open space and um, just being at peace uh, is going to really help me get back into a place where I can write beautiful melody and lyrics. And that's my challenge on this tour, is to be able to write something extraordinary. This is low tone, and obviously we can change the tones of the what actual note is coming out of this by filling it up with water. It will get higher, and as you take water out, it will get lower. So, if we record it, we can actually pitch it to the key of the song, which is B flat major. So we're gonna have to find our B flat. <laughs> you know, we can get a really great tone out of uh, that idea without compromising the whole ethos of what this project is, which is to be outside and create music. You know, it doesn't always have to be about recording the artists. It can be about creating sounds within the environment you're in. It's like something out of a dream or a nightmare, depending on whether you think it's uh, beautiful or, or desolate. But one thing that I don't think anyone can deny is that it's absolutely epic. It's our first sort of mission out towards the sea. So we're going to be recording the noise of the waves and the, sea, and the way the water rushes up and down the shore, which I'm really excited about because it's one of the most natural forms of white noise that you get in nature. It's been an interesting thing to work with Ben because I've seen him literally pick up a computer and start to make his first beats for the first time. You know, he's a listener. He's sat behind the drum kit for the last five years prior to that and he's been able to establish what is what works and what doesn't. And within a matter of four years, he's from, gone from that space to what I believe to be the most, one of the most talented producers in our country. You know, walking five kilometers, carrying 50 kilograms. I'm alive. There's wind starting to come up now, but that's because the temperature is changing. The nature of it is that it's flat. So although it's dead out there, you can actually hear people talking on the other side. It's definitely the most exotic place I've played my horn. It's really nice. It's a bit of a challenge because the air is quite dry here. It's quite inspiring, just like open your eyes and look around and just like think of something and let it come out your horn. Are you ready to do a take? Okay, let's go. You know, when Raven first joined the band, it was pretty much near the beginning of, of when things really started happening. He came on board to play sax and keys, and it's just sort of grown into this much bigger involvement. And you know, he's such an integral part to the band now, and it's, we were just, I suppose, we're really grateful to have someone who actually has musical experience and, and a degree in music. Thank you. 
I have not rehearsed these before today. Verse one and two, obviously I've done a little bit because we had it as a reference track, but verse three is brand new. But I'm, I'll get it, it's fine, you know? And then I've got another track that I wrote with Carl, which is really cool. I'm excited to jam that today and um, sing it today, and we're gonna get Carl on guitar as well, which is gonna be epic. Play some weird places, but this is a, this is the first. <laughs> So many different kinds of genres in it in the, in the dance music world. The most interesting thing about it is that all of these EDM genres are going to be recorded outside in the sand. Here. Five, six, seven, eight. We are about to record Creatures of the Night. Actually, one night I just I walked through to the kitchen and made myself a mug of Milo and uh, just sang it <laughs> at, at the kettle. And then thought it was quite cool and called up Ben and I was like, uh, yeah, got this really cool hook. But the darkness unites, puts our minds in this fight, and a feeling conjures up inside. We're testing, we're testing the microphones, the choir is back there, warming up, the sun's going down, the moon's coming up, it's perfect time, all the energies have aligned. We are the creatures, the creatures of the night, in our darkest hour, I know we'll be alright. We are the creatures. The creatures of the night In our darkest hour I know we'll be The name of the game today is Reverb. Yeah, and delay. No. And delay. That's quite cool. Let's just check this one out first, Red. We will encountered one of the natures of a Commons Cop room. If it is more than 50% sand, it will be dead, and therefore Reverb will be non-existent. Yeah. Although there is, there is there's a, a room sound here. There's a bit of pre-delay, but none Check how little creatures have walked up. Well, the cool thing is that the wind is not blowing really at all now. Because obviously there are no windows. It's kind of, it's kind of weird. It's a great reverb. Hey? Cool reverb, eh? Playback recordings that we did earlier on the trip. 
just so that I can capture the reverb of the room. So essentially what you do is you put the speaker on one side, shoot the sound down there of whatever, if it was Jules singing in Dead Flay, or Raven playing sax there. Put a microphone at the other end. The microphone hears the dry signal and it hears the reverb, so you get a wet, a wet signal. crazy to think that lives were lived here and in the blink of an eye suddenly then lives weren't lived here and the sand moved in and nature took over. Uh, it's quite remarkable and it's quite, quite special really, I guess. A sick delay. Do you hear that? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is on the, the polarity pattern of this microphone has two large diaphragm condensers on the inside, which if you look through the sunlight you might be able to see. And essentially what we can do is we can select the figure of eight pattern here, which allows us to record sound on both sides of the microphone. So it's the perfect kind of mic to actually send. You're going to lower my microphone down into the canyon. Ben, are you crazy? Yes, he is. No, you're That's not, Ben. There has got to be a better microphone, but not my microphone. <laughs> when are you book comment, yes. I am book comment. And how do you actually, how are you going to attach it? With a mic cable. Ben, they don't click in. They don't have figure of eight polarity. Is this going to be like the It's either this or the C12, Jules. You decide. I Plug need that in. backpack. Come down. You're gonna be okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Thanks, brother. No bad. And there we are, ladies and gentlemen. 
which means I need it wrapped around a sturdy rock. I send some, I'm gonna send some bodyguard down there. Okay, yeah. Would you be my ah 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 ah? Yeah. Would you be my bodyguard? Are you impressed now? It's impressive, but it's also stupid. It's impressively stupid. Would you be my bodyguard? Would you take me home? Would you be my bodyguard? I don't wanna be alone. Somehow we've actually managed to achieve most of the objectives that we set out for ourselves, not knowing what the time frame considerations would be and what the, the limitations would be. And I'm feeling excited to get back and I'm feeling amped to get back into the studio and finish this album and take everything that we've managed to capture outside and put it together and make this the best album that we've ever made. Yesterday when I got to Fisher River Canyon, it was, it was a little bit stressful, but I kind of realized it's coming to an end, so I could, uh, you so know, start winding, down. Start winding yeah. down. But it's a little bit too early because we've still got like this big fat mission back home. It's, it's all a risk. Everything that you're putting out is always going to be judged. Music is so derivative these days and people are always going to listen to what you do and sort of hold it up against something else. You know, I'm always trying to create something that's fresh and sounds nice and, you know, fall in love with the song rather than sort of get critical about the production. I mean, the whole previous album was always just a sort of a process of trying to find something that's good enough to release. And with this album, I mean, it's really cool. We've got really cool content. It's like having really amazing ingredients, you know, like the ingredients are really cool. And it's now up to me not to overcook the fillet steak. <laughs>